Hi guys, good afternoon, and welcome to this week's edition of Coffee with Pastor G. And uh, we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 21 here this afternoon. And before we do that, though, I wanted to uh, share a praise report with you as we just got back from Mexico on Wednesday. And we had a great time with Pastor Antonio out there and Sister Elena Hernandez and Paola um, we had a great time at the men's home there in Kamalu as we were able to preach and teach. Uh, and then 10 of those men made a decision to publicly display their faith in Jesus and their newness in life through baptism. And so we went out and baptized those men and had a great time. Uh, while we were out there, we were able to look at the progress uh, on the casita that we're building out there and the refurbishment of the women's home that we're building and uh, very happy with the progress and we're still looking for um, some more money to be able to finish the roof uh, as Elena and Antonio were presenting um, the spreadsheet report uh, to me and uh, kind of where we're at and, and where we need to be and um, so we prayed and, and we're trusting God with this whole thing and um, on our way back uh, home from Mexico, I received uh, information uh, that uh, there was a, another large donation towards Mexico already in the process, and so uh, we're looking forward to being able to put the roof on, um, and then in October, we're hoping to take another trip out there to um, supply the roll roofing and the tar paper and the nails that is going to be needed for that roof as well. So um, exciting stuff in Mexico and just praise reports as God continues to open doors out there and use them in a mighty way. Uh, November, I asked Antonio and his wife, Paula, and their three beautiful little girls uh, to come to Tehachapi and to share with us. So we're praying that God would open a door um, early in November for them to come out and share with us a little bit here as they've become part of the family here. Um, I also want to mention uh, to the men out there, uh, Bob has worked really hard to put together this men's retreat um, that we're going to be taking out at Walker Basin, and it's going to be September 25th through the 27th, so it's a Friday, Saturday, come home early Sunday. Uh, we've done it three or four years in a row now, and so looking forward to that. Men, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, and you are welcome to come. The cost is $25. Uh, that gets you five uh, square meals uh, and a lot of good fellowship and teaching and um, just a good time. And so that's September 25th through the 27th. And so with that, I want to take a minute here and just take a look at Proverbs uh, 21 here this afternoon as I was uh, studying this chapter earlier today. And I came across verse 22 Verse 22 says, A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the stronghold in which they trust. A wise man scales the city wall and tears down the stronghold in which those people trust. You know, you think about a big wall around a house or around a city. That big wall provides protection and security and uh, people can feel safe inside of that place. Uh, but the Bible says a wise man is able to scale that wall and go in and tear down this stronghold in which the city is trusting in. You know, the word of God is the way to tear down these strongholds. The wise man will use the wisdom of God to scale the wall and then tear down these strongholds. What is a stronghold? Well, a stronghold can be a place of security uh, or a place dominated by a particular group. A stronghold can be a, uh, marked by a particular characteristic. Uh, these are strongholds. Uh, I ran, read a fascinating article the other day uh, from a psychi psychiatrist or psychologist who did this test and this survey and what he came to find was, is that by the age of 13, the majority of people have already created their worldview 
Uh, they've already begun to create their belief system or their knowing of what right and wrong is uh, or their ability to be able to choose uh, what they believe to be right and wrong, that these characteristics already are developed by the age of 13. And most of people uh, from 13 on throughout their life uh, do not lose these basic, what I would call these strongholds or these beliefs. And so what an amazing thing to think that um, the way we judge right and wrong, the way that we uh, believe, you could say our ideologies are usually created by the age of 13. And so God wants to invade these strongholds. God wants to invade these belief systems that we trust in, that we find security in, that we find our identity in. Because ultimately, apart from Christ, all of these other ideologies and belief systems will fail. Uh, they do not lead to eternal life. They only lead to maybe uh, some prosperity on this earth or getting by or being a very moral person. Uh, but in the end, these belief systems, this ideology is a stronghold against the work of God. You see, God doesn't want us to depend or rely or trust in anything other than him. Because as we're going to look at this Sunday, our God is a jealous God. Uh, he isn't jealous of you and what you have. Uh, he is jealous for you. Uh, he doesn't want to share you with another false god or a stronghold or an ideology that is contrary to uh, the word of God. And so interesting in 2 Corinthians 10, that's exactly what Paul uh, talks about. We looked at this last Sunday. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 Paul says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of God of Christ. And so how do we tear down these strongholds? Well, we have to be willing to scale the city walls first. And then we use the wisdom of God, the word of God, the sword of the spirit uh, that will then uh, pierce men and women's hearts and their souls. And uh, this is the tearing down uh, that people can then um, submit their minds to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And Jesus says that he came to set us free uh, free indeed. You think about the many people that are being held captive by these beliefs that they have uh, been ingrained with since the age of 13. Maybe it's because of what they saw mom and dad do, or uh, they've had an abusive relationship, or they were introduced into uh, all kinds of wickedness at an early age, or maybe they, maybe they had a very radical uh, parent who uh, had radical ideologies. Well, Whatever their belief system and their ideologies came from at the age of 13, people are being held captive by these things. And Jesus wants to tear these strongholds down because he knows that he is the one who can make us free and free indeed. I read an interesting um, devotional. Uh, this is the life wisdom from Billy Graham. And Billy Graham says this um, kind of along these lines of, we all have these strongholds. We all have these things that we kind of want to share with God. You know, maybe we're trusting more in a stronghold than we really are in God. Uh, until that stronghold kind of lets us down, then we look to God. Uh, but then God saves us and God helps us. But then we turn back to these other strongholds. Instead of completely uh, eliminating these strongholds and fully surrendering and submitting ourselves to God and to His Word, and to walk by faith. Uh, God wants us to trust him for everything, not to rely on these other little strongholds that we can kind of maybe keep as pets or keep on a leash when we need it. No, God wants to tear these things down completely so that we have all of our hope and our trust and our faith in him. Listen to what Billy Graham says. He says, human nature is the same the world over. And when the gospel of Christ is preached in simplicity and power, 
there is a response in the human soul. He says, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say go into capitalist countries only. I've been in countries with right-wing dictatorships. I've been in countries that have left-wing dictatorships. But I've tried to stay right with the gospel of Christ and stay out of the various political situations. He goes on to say, racial prejudice, anti-Semitism, or hatred of anyone with different beliefs has no place in the human mind or heart. I urge all people to examine themselves and renew their own hearts and minds before God. Only the supernatural love of God through changed lives can solve the problems that we face in our world. If you preach the love of Christ, there is only a spiritual change, not only a spiritual change, but a physiological or moral change as well. The man who receives Christ forgets all about race when he is giving his life to Christ and surrendering and just walking uh, by faith in Jesus Christ, you forget about those other things. You're too busy living for Jesus uh, to rely on these strongholds anymore or these uh, issues of, of hatred or racism or uh, social status or political status, whatever it is. Uh, if you're too busy being consumed and trusting Jesus, um, then you are giving your life for Christ and these other things will uh, just kind of fade away. Remember, Paul also uh, gave us an example uh, with his apologetics there in uh, 2 Corinthians, um, or I'm sorry, in the book of Acts, chapter 17, when he was in Athens uh, and he went to Mars Hill or the Areopagus, where the great wise philosophers and uh, wise men of the decade would gather and begin to share all their ideologies and their worldviews and uh, these sorts of things. Well, Paul scaled that wall of that strong city, and he went in and he tore down those strongholds because he pointed to one of their statues that they were there worshiping all these false gods, looking to the wisdom of man, which 1 Corinthians 1 tells us God has made foolish the wisdom of man, uh, that they will never find God through their own wisdom. They have to humble themselves, and they have to receive it by faith. Well, a lot of times, wise people will refuse to receive the simplicity of the gospel, and God is made uh, satisfied by this, that in man's wisdom, they will not find God. They have to do it God's way. But Paul pointed to that unknown God and used it as an opportunity to share about the one true God. He used that image and that statue to speak to them about the life of Jesus Christ and the death and the burial and the resurrection. And oh yeah, that one day Jesus Christ has been given the authority to come back and to judge the world. And so God has given him this authority. And so we need to have our sins forgiven uh, so that we, when we stand before uh, God, either at the Bema seat of Christ or God forbid you're at the judgment seat um, of Christ, uh, we will be covered by the blood of Jesus. If we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and, and trust Him, uh, put our faith in Him, then the Bible says those sins have been washed away. Uh, they have been separated as far as the east is the west. But if we refuse the simplicity of the gospel and we are unable to humble ourselves and uh, cry out to Jesus and ask Him to forgive us of our sins, well, then we will also stand, or people will stand before him uh, and God the Father uh, at the judgment seat, the great, great white throne judgment, where every word, thought, and deed will be uh, revealed, and that person will stand before God and give an account. And let me tell you, everyone will be found guilty. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through him. Jesus is the only way. And so trust him today. Uh, put your faith in him. Uh, let go of those strongholds. Let the word of God tear down those strongholds. 
by simply reading the Word of God and meditating on His Word and praying. Uh, you enter into this relationship with Him and God begins to tear these things down. And ultimately, then you find yourself just trusting Him and living for Jesus and all these other things are fading away. And so may God bless you this week. Hopefully we see you this Sunday. Service time is at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll be sharing out of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So God bless you and stay cool. Uh, we love you and look forward to seeing you.